Hi, my name is Kate Schuster. I'm the director of the Middle School Public Debate Program, which is a community service and educational outreach program at Claremont McKenna College. I'm here at the college this summer as part of our summer residential programs. These are all students who are middle school students who've been debating for one to two years who are here on campus for summer enrichment programs. They're here to do a sample debate for you. On my right is the proposition team. On my left is the opposition team. Today we'll be debating the topic Television is a bad influence. All right, let's get started. The proposition side of this debate believes that television is a very bad influence for these reasons. But first off, we've got to redefine this topic. To television is a bad influence for children 13 and under. Now to go on to our points. Our first point is that children may make bad things. If a child see, under 13 sees something on TV, they're very likely to want to feel more mature and try to do these things. But there's many bad things on TV. There's violence, there's drugs, language, alcohol use. If a child sees these things and then tries to mimic them, that could end up in a, a not safe community or it, it could just lead to bad things. The kids could grow up thinking that these things are okay because they mimic it, mimicked it when they were a child. Our second point is that there's no health. When you're sitting watching TV, there is no health in that. You won't, you will lose no weight. You could possibly even gain weight because many people eat when they watch TV. So if you're just sitting on a couch for a few hours a day, eating and watching TV for a few hours a day, then how will you be able to run America, since the children are the future of America, how will you be able to run America when you grow up? I think you guess. You can eat things like vegetables or healthy things while you're watching. Yes, you could, but how many kids do you know who grab a carrot and go watch some the cartoons? Like it. Um, our third point is that there are many beneficial activities that are lost when you watch TV. There's many important things that kids 13 and under need to do. One of them is homework. If you're not doing your, if you're watching TV instead of doing homework, then how are you going to get good grades and how are you going to pass school? No, thank you. Also, reading. Um, Reading is good to develop your language arts skills and just to make you a smarter person. And if kids are watching cartoons over something that can help them be successful when they grow up, this isn't good. And the, finally, you also need time for family and friends. If you have no time to be social with friends or to talk to your family and hang out with them, what will you grow up to be? No, thank you, yes. What if their homework is to watch a presidential speech on TV? Then that's great. But most of the time, okay, yes, the, um, kids can watch presidential speech from homework, but most of the time they're watching cartoons or violent shows. Um, no, thank you. Our fourth point is the stereotypes. In many cartoons and shows, the good guys usually portrayed as pretty and a shining light on them, and then the bad guys kind of dark and ugly. If, if kids watch these shows and get these stereotypes stuck in their mind, what do you think will happen when they grow up? If they grow up and think that these things are true, they would have just a bad view on life. And there's also many racial stereotypes on TV. There are many, if kids watch these and get the, watch, watch TV and get these racial stereotypes in their heads, when they grow up, they could think that, oh, it's okay to do this. It's okay to think that this is the right way. When it's not, the world doesn't always work like how it is in TV. There's also many smoking and drugs, lots of smoking and drugs in TV. Maybe, they, um, and there are stereotypes in TV that one race or one kind of people smoke or do drugs. And this isn't true. Kids shouldn't learn this when they're little. Our fifth point is obsession. It's fantasy versus reality. If you're sitting on the couch watching three to four or two hours of TV every day, then you're going to confuse the real life with entertainment. If six-year-olds are watching Power Rangers for a few hours, they won't know real life versus fantasy. They won't be able to contribute to the real world because they won't be able to differentiate between entertainment, which is made to entertain and is usually fake, and what they'll have to do to be successful in life and contribute to the real world. So to go over our points and our impacts, the first one is that children mimic bad things. If they get a bad influence from television, then it could create a very violent community if they see violence or drugs on TV. Your judge, your community could be 
less safe. And people could even die because of what they see on TV. And second, there's no help. Um, there's no help. You, you lose no weight when you're just sitting watching TV. And sometimes people eat when they watch TV. This can make them even more obese. And uh, they won't be able to run America when they grow. Third, the beneficial um, activities are lost, such as reading and homework, which you'll need to pass and be successful in life. Also, there are many stereotypes that aren't true, and the kids might get stuck in their minds because of TV. And finally, the obsession, fantasy versus reality. Kids need to know what's real and what's not. And if they're watching entertainment all day, they'll be able to know the difference when they grow up. Thank you, please go for class.
by the news. We can learn what is happening in our society today and how we can help society today. Yes. Um, you said that in the last three or two years that IQs increased by three points, but just because IQs increased didn't mean they increased because of TV. Actually, according to the New Yorker, which did a study about TV, it showed that three points, that the three points was mainly because of TV. According to our sources, 64% of TV is good or it does not have a bad influence. For example, sports. How do, how do things like sports, basketball, football, how is that a bad influence? You're learning exercise. You can't, it teaches you to go outside and try to be like Kobe Bryant or whoever you want to be. For these reasons and more, the opposition has won this debate. Also, 
Tele uh, television causes ADD. A study done of 1,345 kids showed that three hours or more of television a day made kids 30% more likely to have ADD, attention deficit disorder. If children have attention deficit disorder, they cannot concentrate in school. And attention, and they cannot do well in school, they cannot concentrate, and therefore will not do as well on their SATs and become successful later in life. Also, children are becoming obese, and weight gain is the second most killer of children. Anything we can do to save children from being killed is some, and if TV is at least, you know, maybe, it may, if it, even if it's 10% of the reason why children are being obese, we should get rid of it, because anything that is making children obese and getting childhood diabetes is bad. Also, later on in life, children will get heart disease, such as stroke, heart attack, and um, other diseases that will make their lives miserable. Be <clears throat> children are wasting their time watching TV when they could be doing beneficial activities, such as socializing and reading. And if children are socializing and reading, they will increase their social skills and their reading skills, which will definitely help them later in life. Not learning what um, Dora the Explorer said on Disney, on Disney Channel on Saturday morning. Because uh, children can watch the news, uh, can read the news instead of watching it because they mimic bad things on television, such as violence, because their health decreases because of television, and because they could be doing many other beneficial activities, is why television is bad influence and the proposition has won this debate. Well, what about looking at their parents? 
Those are adults, grandparents. There's no stereotyping when you know the truth. No, thank you. Now to my own points. Disney Channel, for a fact, encourages little children to get up and dance and sing. Or the old cartoon Popeye and his spinach, where he encouraged kids to eat spinach so he, they would get energy to go do things. The dance and sing along so that kids will get up and move while they're watching TV. And encourages them to have a healthy snack with their TV watching. Also, Nickelodeon, which is another one of the top three shows that ed for educational TV for kids to watch. It shows them that they encourage kids to get up and move. And every one week, every summer, there is a get out and play program with Nickelodeon turns off their station so that kids will get out there and play for a whole week of no Nickelodeon. Yes, no thank you. You know, you stated that the Nickelodeon one week in the summer, they turn off the TV. That's one week out of 52 weeks. One week is better than no weeks. It's trying to help. It's a start. It's better than nothing. Now I'd like to clear up a point my teammate has stated. The true point is that every decade since 1920, the average IQ of a child between the ages of 10 and 13 has gone up three points. This is a study from the New Yorker written by Stephen Johnson that proposes that what is making us smarter is really what we thought was making us dumber, which is TV. Also, news. If we had no news and the kids didn't get to watch it, then they would not see the presidential speeches out of time, out of, out of cue. News, weather, job, not jobs, but weather and news, two main things kids need to learn about what's happening in their lifetime of right now. And if they don't know what's happening, the kids will outcast them for not knowing the truth. This is why that the opposition has won this debate. We know that TV has some few negative effects, but we also know that the goods do outweigh the bads. The TV is a machine, Judge. It is not to blame for any yet few negative effects that it has. If anyone is at fault, it would be a parent, because parents should be watching what their kids watch on TV. So, to review my opponent's points, uh, to review racial, um, gender stereotypes, the good and the bad stereotypes, before TV was even invented, there were stereotypes all over. That is because race, race was something that people weren't proud of a long time ago. And that's something that we can't change now. But showing it on TV is not going to influence any more than it already has in the past. Also, uh, she says that it increases ADD and obesity chances. There are other causes. People can be born with ADD. People can develop it from other things as well. Also, with obesity, there are medications that can cause kids to get also more obese. Kids, medications that kids get for um, asthma, things, um, just certain medications that can incre in, to increase weight gain. Also, if it's kids' ch uh, choice to eat junk food or healthy foods during watching TV, that is their choice to make. But when t it's not TV's fault when kids are start decide to eat junk food or healthy food. Also, um, they said that there's no way to tell the difference between fantasy and reality. News, Judge, news shows reality. News shows what happens in the world. That is reality. That's what kids need to know, that things are happening every day. People are dying, but that's something that they're going to have to get used to. You can't raise them in a world with perfect things. Also, uh, they said that they're, oh, that newspaper, they, uh, but you can't see live educational programs. Maybe you have a homework assignment that's assigned to you to respond to an educational program. You can't watch a presidential speech. Things such as these are important to kids' education as well. Here. Also, they said uh, that they're watching 1,453 hours of TV on average a year and only 900 school hours. Judge, there are 8,760 hours in a year. What other things could they be doing during this time? Exercise, Sweet. playing with friends, social life, sleeping as well. Also, there are many things that kids could be doing. Now, to influence my, or my teammates' points, first of all, without education, people would fall behind. People who can't afford education um, need to be able to have some source of um, early learning. Therefore, they will can be protected from discrimination instead of being influenced by it. So, 
Also, no, actually it is not. We are talking about stereotyping. Well, this prevents stereotyping with people who have a lower um, funding. Also, it is educational, has educational programs. IQ has increased over the years. We have shown you all these things that, um, that are obviously proving that the opposition has won today. Thank you.